So now Professor Zanini will talk about studies on Chinese tea culture, past and present. Uh, as I said, we will leave all the questions for the end of the session. <coughs> yes. uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you, Marco, for the insightful presentation about uh, these early references uh, about tea in Western sources. And actually, I have a lot of questions <laughs> on your presentation to discuss later. Uh, so today, um, I would like to talk about another aspect of uh, tea culture. I would like to go to, go to the very origin of the problem and talk about what is tea culture. So uh, before talking about what is tea culture study, we must say something about the object of this field of studies. When we talk about tea culture, with the English expression uh, tea culture, today actually we use it as an equivalent of the Chinese term cha wen hua, the one you see uh, on the screen in the slide. Uh, the term is composed by two words, the term, the two Chinese characters. Well, one is a character, single character, this T, uh, quite unproblematic, say. And the other one is the disyllabic word, wenhua, culture. Uh, the terms might appear simple and unproblematic, but it is actually a very confusing word, as uh, the central term of this word is culture, as the British sociologist Raymond Williams says, is one of the two or three most complicated words in the English language. And it has various divergent and competing meanings. I might say that all the different meanings uh, of the, term, the word culture do coexist also in the term cha wen hua, tea culture, of which we must say uh, we, don't not, we don't find any reference before the 80s of the 20th century. So it is a new word that was, was born in that period. Today, this word, cha wen hua, tea culture, is commonly used in China, and somebody might say it is abused, uh, in all its possible divergent exceptions, both by academics who publish studies on the history, sociology, literary heritage of tea, like those we are talking about today, as well by tea merchants and sellers when they boast that they are promoting tea culture where they present, teach people how to drink tea, normally the very tea they sell. So notwithstanding this possible trivializing um, use of the term culture in uh, this context, we should observe that in Chinese, the term wenhua, culture, is not attached to any material element. Uh, we might find words such as yin shi wen hua, food culture, jiu wen hua, wine culture, or alcohol culture, but we never find words such as licorice culture or chrysanthemum culture, even if these two substances also have been commonly used in China as drink for a long time. I think that the particular position, as Marco just said, of tea in Chinese culture is due in great part to its conception and adoption as a ritual beverage, a function that in Chinese culture is primarily performed by alcohol, actually, and most importantly because it became the focus of a, a huge production of text essays dedicated to it. The first is the Cha Jing by Louis, the first treatise entirely dedicated to tea ever written in China and in the world, actually, is a text that elevated tea to an object of aesthetic appreciation and a sophisticated connoisseurship. Before Louis, tea was not tea as we think today. This book became the model for a rich production of essays dedicated to tea in its various aspects, composed in the following centuries. Many high officials, scholars, imperial princes, and even an emperor composed treatises dedicated to tea. More than 100 titles of this kind of essays are recorded from the, Qing, from the, from the Tang Dynasty to the end of the imperial period. It is very important to remember that there is no 
comparable literature on alcoholic beverages or any other food in Chinese sources. During the Ming, there was the maximum production of SS and tea, which account to, of a, uh, for about the half of the total. And most important, in this period, tea literature received formal recognition as an independent genre of writings under the label Cha Shu Tea Books within the first dedicated collectanea printed in 1612. The most relevant contribution to the study of tea culture produced in the Qing Dynasty is the sequel of the tea classic, edited by Lu Tinsan. It is an encyclopedic anthology of quotations from a large array of writings dedicated to tea. After the end of the imperial period and the early uh, 20th century, uh, tea production in China and tea export were at their lowest, having since long lost their primacy to the large-scale tea estates of the Indian subcontinent. The agronomist and economist Wu Jianong was one of the new generation Chinese scholars formed abroad engaged in agricultural reform in his country. Once completed his studies in Japan at the National Tea Exper Experimental Station in 1922, who assumed a leading position in China in the reorganization of the tea industry. Who produced many works dedicated to the enhancement of tea cultivation, processing and commercialization, and in, in his late years only, he started to write something about tea culture and produce a very important contribution about the classic of tea by Louis. What is important that during the 30s, the Department of Agriculture of Zhongshan University in Canton, in Guangzhou, start the first course in tea studies, cha xue. The term is still in use today, indicate mainly agro agronomical and chemical, technical and medical studies related to tea production. The historical aspects of tea and tea literature are also included in these, under this label, but occupy normally a secondary position. In any case, the two terms Cha Wen Hua Yan Jiu or Cha Xue just used as synonymous. In 1941, the writer and publisher Hu Shang Yuan, Hu Shang Yuan sorry, uh, edited Gu Jin Cha Shi, the first collection of texts of quotation concerning tea from the Tang to the end of uh, the Qing dynasty produced after the end of the imperial era. In 1958, the agricultural historian Wang Guodin, Wang Guodin published Cha Shu Zhu Mu Ti Yao. This is a catalog of 98 essays and tea with critical abstract. This catalog by Wang, Wang Guodin represents the first survey of the imperial books on tea produced in China in the modern period and remained the only one available until the very last decades of the 20th century. It was actually Japanese scholars who first actually devoted their endeavors to the reprint and analysis of Chinese tea literary heritage in the 20th century. In 1956, uh, uh, sorry, Sen Shitsu, the 15 year motto of the Hurasenke school, um, published a huge uh, collection of work uh, of text on tea, the, Ch the Chado Koten Zenshu, which contains three ancient texts ancient Chinese texts from, uh, uh, from the Tang to the Song period. In 1974, Fukuda Soi made the first annotated translation of the, in Japanese of the Cha Jing and other books on tea from China. In 1976, Nunome Chufu Nakamura Takashi published a similar collection of translations. Uh, after a few years, uh, Nunome Chufu also published the uh, Photostatic, photostatic reprint of uh, uh, the edition of the Cha Shu Chen Shu collected in Japan. Um, the, the accomplishment of this Japanese scholar was a great stimulus to the research on Chinese tea cultural heritage, both in China and mainland Ch and in Taiwan uh, in the following decades. Let's say that the start of everything was in Taiwan during the 70s. 
um, in that period, Taiwan witnessed a revival of interest in tea consumption, promoted both by tea entrepreneurs and intellectuals, that eventually gave birth to a new style tea art called Cha Yi, who was based on the local Taiwanese and Fujianese tradition of Kung Fu Cha, mixed with ritualistic elements that echoes the formality of the Japanese tea ceremony. The book of tea art, and just, uh, just the three people you see in this, uh, this line are among the three most important, most relevant period in that period that were very active in promoting uh, tea culture and tea art in Taiwan. The boom of tea art in Taiwan was also paralleled by the increase of publications of books and articles about tea drinking, tea culture, but both with scholarly and popularizing purpose. Among the first work produced in the early 1980s, there were some unauthorized translations of the Japanese version of the both mentioned books I just presented. Uh, one of the most prominent academics who first devoted to his uh, endeavors and uh, his researches to tea culture in Taiwan was the historian Wu Zhihe. In 1981, he produced the first of many essays about tea in the Ming Dynasty, and in 1984, he published the book Cha de Wen Hua, The Culture of Tea. So, as I just mentioned, this is actually the first time the term Wen Hua appears together with uh, culture, uh, sorry, with tea. In the following years, the term Cha Wen Hua without the the in the middle was adopted by many other scholars, both in Taiwan and mainland China, for their, as a label for their field of studies. So, by the end of the 1980s, research on Chinese tea culture, Cha Wen Hua Yin Jiu, or also you could say uh, tea culture studies in English, was, uh, had already gained recognition as a multidisciplinary field of inquiry encompassing various branches of the humanities. From the following decades, research on Chinese tea culture developed quickly on both sides of the Taiwan Strait with the conspicuous production of contribution on this subject. Studies on tea culture moved in several direction. According to an estimate made by Ding Yishou, a professor from Anhui Agricultural University, by 2009, there were already 3,000 articles and more than 600 books dedicated to different aspects of Chinese tea culture. Ting says that studies on tea culture moved principally in five directions. One is uh, general studies on tea culture, studies on the history of tea, studies on the art of tea, studies on Lu Yu and his Cha Jing, and compilation of primary sources and references, and mass reference materials. Ting said that uh, there were also some other aspects, such as uh, tea and literature, tea and art, tea and Chinese philosophy, tea wares, of course, uh, and tea houses. It should be noticed that in this list of terms, there is no reference to scientific, technical, chemical, or medical matters regarding tea, even if the material aspect of tea and the practice of tea is an inherent on all these uh, subjects. So uh, we see that the, the term Cha uh, Wen Hua is a substantially a kind of subsection of the larger Cha Xue tea studies. Even, in a, even if, as I said, it is often used as a synonym, synonym of this term. So um, among the first contributions, there were the compilation of materials. The first comprehensive compilation of historical material on tea uh, was published in China in uh, 1981 by Chen Zhu and Zhu Zizhen. Uh, many years later, a larger compilation was edited by Chen Bingfang in 1999, and the same year, Ran Haokeng and other scholars also published a critical edition of 76 texts and tea. In 2007, 
uh, Hong Kong scholar Zheng Peikai and again Zhu Zhezhen published a similar and larger compilation with 114 titles. Uh, of course, uh, it is important to remind that now most of these historical material are available on the internet in, in chinatextproject.org or many other websites and many Japanese libraries also have published the electronic version of their uh, text. So one of the most significant early contribution to tea culture, maybe the first in of this case, produced in China, in mainland China, is the Zhong Guo Cha Jing, uh, edited by uh, Chen Zhou Mao, the di then director of the Tea Research Institute of the Academic of the, sorry, the Chinese Academy of Agriculture, Science, and Commissioner of the Ministry of Culture, of, of Agriculture, sorry. Um, that it was a very bulky, a big volume. Uh, this is called the new, uh, the, sorry, the Chinese tea canon, or the Chinese uh, canon of tea, and uh, is a very comprehensive collection of uh, authoritative essays written by 52 scholars that cover all the aspects of the beverage. Many of these experts were among the founder of the China International Tea Culture Institute created in Hangzhou in 1993. In 1991, the journal Nuye Kaoku, Agricultural Archaeology, started publishing some issues completely dedicated to the Chinese uh, to Chinese tea uh, culture with the title Zhong Guo Cha Wan Hua, featuring essays by Chinese and international scholars and specialists. So in the last 25 years, Chinese academic research on tea culture produced many important contributions on this subject. Nevertheless, we, I must say that we might find some different standard of academic rigor in the approach of some Chinese scholars to this subject. Many works, I'm talking about academic works, uh, on tea share a common narrative in which tea drinking had existed in China since the prehistoric times and developed coherently in a single line of succession in the imperial dynasty to present. Many books contain whole paragraphs or chapters about the tea consumption in the archaic period or in the Han dynasty, although, as Marco just said, there is no substance no reliable textual reference to tea drinking before the third century of the Christian era, AD. So the, the first reliable uh, reference to tea consumption is only in that period. We have some information about there, but we, don't, we can't write a full chapter about tea in the Zhou dynasty, but we don't have any material about that. Even if some Chinese scholars have pointed out the total lack of historical value of legend, such as that of the mythological emperor Shen Nong or the monk Kan Lu. This legend continued to be quoted as historical fact in many books. As I often like to say, uh, finding these things in scholarly essays is like seeing the attribution of the discovery of wine to Noah or the discovery of fire to Prometheus in a wannabe or so-called supposed to be scientific work. So they are legends, that's all. So we can surmise that it is for, nation, for the sake of national pride or local pride, maybe that many Chinese scholars cite forged or wrong quotation of Chinese sources or simply forced the interpretation of the existing materials. This attitude that we might lap it as weakish and somehow, it says it, is, it aims to produce a, a story which is the ratification, if not the glorification of the present. This is the definition of weakish history given by Herbert Butterfield in 1931. So it is visible also in the approach to the more recent part of Chinese tea history. Newer publications on tea tend to omit completely any reference to the role of Taiwan and of Japan in the transmission and reshaping of tea culture during the 80s, and they solely discussed its connection with the ancient tradition of Chinese culture. 
in, in any case, notwithstanding these parochial concepts, research conducted by Chinese scholars has shed light on the wealth of information about the historical evolution of tea. In particular, there are many valuable studies focusing on single periods and specific aspects of tea consumption that contributed to a better understanding of the complexity of the Chinese cultural heritage about this particular drink. In all the great ferment around tea and tea culture that steered Chinese and East Asian academies and societies in the last decades of the 20th century, Western scholarship remain virtually absent. This delay is even more evident if we compare it with Western scholarship on Japanese tea art, which started producing relevant contributions already during the 1960s. For a long time, the only information about Chinese tea culture, uh, culture available in English were in the very big volume All About Tea, published in 1935 by William. This is actually the most complete, the most comprehensive, most authoritative English written work dedicated to tea since ever by now. Um, the largest part of this text is about tea production and tea technology, and, but it also has some parts about tea culture. And it contains the first, or it is called a translation digest of the Cha Jing, produced by Edward Denison Ross of the, Oriental, of the School of Oriental Studies at the University of London at that time. Regrettably, after Eucharist, for many decades, Western scholarship, and in particular Sinology, completely neglected this aspect of social, Chinese social and material culture. The first English translation of the Wool text of Cha Jing was published in 1974 by Francis Rose Carpenter and was not actually complete. It was consequently translated into French in 1977 by Jean-Marie Vigny. Translation of short parts of the Cha Jing and other Song and Ming texts are also found in John Blofeld, the Chinese Art of Tea, published in 1985, which is the first book dedicated to Chinese tea ever published in English. In any case, the first critical translation of the whole text of the Cha Jing, accompanied by a rich apparatus of notes, is actually in Italian, edited by Professor Marco Teresa in 1991. Uh, in the following years, Marco Teresa also published the translation of other three Tang and Sung essays on tea and various other studies on Chinese tea culture. The American independent scholar Stephen O. Young is presently working on a critical translation of the Cha Jing. I personally had chance to see some part of this work uh, and I, I think that it might be, it's going to be a very accurate and exhaustive book. Other important um, texts produced by Ch Western scholars are actually um, dedicated to the history of uh, uh, tea trade. One is uh, Tax and Story, the uh, Heaven Storehouse by Paul Smith, which analyzed the tea and horse butter during the Song Dynasty. The other one is Harvesting Mountains by Robert Gardella, which is about the tea trade from Fujian, about the Wishan, but maybe Professor Jun right? Uh, the, the, the subject about which Professor Jun is going to talk in uh, his speech right now. Um, in 2000, um, H.C. Huang entered the volume Fermentation of and Food Science within the, the big collection of books about China, of science civilization in China of Joseph Needham. And in the chapter about tea and tea processing, Huang makes a survey of tea literature and also gave, gives many information about the processing of tea in the, during the imperial period. There are also three studies produced in, in the early 2000 about the relation between tea consumption and Buddhism in the Chinese context. When we talk about this subject in Japan, it is quite obvious, but in, in China, often this, this aspect is often neglected. Presently, there are only two books on the global history of tea written by 
Western academics. One is The True History of Tea by Victor Mayer and Eli, Eli O. Uh, in monograph, aimed mainly to no specialized reader, and it's a pity that it has no critical apparatus. The second general history on tea is the volume Steep in History, The Art of Tea, edited by Beatrice Ohenegger, which includes contribution on the development of tea in Asia and in the West by 12 area specialists. The chapter, authored by Stephen O. Young about China, offers an, an exhaustive overview of the history of tea in China and uh, with many interesting insights on its aesthetic and philosophical aspects. Um, apart some, I might say, daring interpolation in the discussion of early references in tea consumption, the contribution of O. Young is definitely based on it extensive and consistent use of primary sources. Um, only very recently, we have the very first two monographs on the history of Chinese tea culture, authored by Western scholars, both published in, 2000, in 2015. One is by James Ben and deals mainly with the religious aspect of tea consumption with particular focus on the relation between tea and Buddhism. Uh, I remind that Professor Ben took part in the colloquium last year in Venice. So his work sheds light on the multiple elements which contributed to the formation of the imagery and aesthetic of tea in the Tang period and its evolution in, during the Song and the following Ming Dynasty. The other monograph is by Brett Inch and focuses on the role of tea in society and the connection between the rise of the art of tea and tea drinking and the development of individualism and self-expression in early modern China. So I would like to conclude no, first my, this overview of studies and Chinese tea culture with uh, two considerations. Uh, the first is that I hope that it is now evident that the term Chinese tea culture is far from being a trivialization of the term culture, as you might say, football culture or some other word attached to the, the word culture. As in China, tea is indeed a central element of material life and the object of a very sophisticated literary tradition. As a corollary of this, I hope that now we also agree in saying that tea culture is not just about how to buy, prepare, and to drink a cup of tea, even if uh, many people think that this tea culture. Tea culture is also this, but there is a lot more than this. The second consideration being here today at Venice University is that, uh, as Mark just said, the increasing number of studies published in the last years and the many academic initiatives about tea culture in China and also in the West showed that the tea and tea culture now are a hot topic. So um, we expect that in the next years we will have many new studies uh, on this subject. So, um, since many aspects of this tradition weight investigation and need to be analyzed with new perspectives and approaches, I hope that my presentation can be also a stimulus for our students here in Venice University or many other places to consider tea culture also as a possible subject for their research work. Thank you. So thanks, Livio, for your very deep and extensive.